What's going on YouTube? Kevin Reese here. Today I'm going to bring you this video on the Scorpion battery that I got. It's a, the Life PO4. It is supposed to be one of the best batteries that you can put in a small engine uh, ATV, lawnmower, um, dirt bike, motorcycle, stuff like that. So let's check it out. I picked it up on batterystuff.com. Now here are the numbers. There's the model number. It's the Scorpion Stinger. 354 cold cranking amps, y'all. That blew my mind. And it is, I'm going to put it on a scale for y'all, but this thing is super light. And there's the grand total price right there, $155, which is a good bit more than you're going to pay for your standard battery. But this thing is supposed to be great. See right here, I got it on the charger, just charging it up. Now you're going to want to do this with any new battery you get. Now I did do the test, the test mode on here. So when I pressed it, it did. They all lit up blue saying 100%. But you don't know how long this battery has been sitting in a warehouse. It's always a good idea to go ahead and put it on a trickle charger and let it charge up first. And I'm putting it out here in my Brute Force 650. Now one of the things is a 650 V twin. So it takes some, some power to turn this motor over. And I've been using these Napa batteries just because the Napa store in my town was right uptown and whenever my battery was dead, I would just run up and get one. I was paying about like 80 bucks for these, but they never really did a great job of starting the four wheeler. I mean, they would start it, but it wasn't like it was turning over really fast. But I always keep it on a, my battery minder trickle charger. Now right now it's charging up my new battery and you can see it's Looks like it's about three quarters of the way full. We started out about here. But I decided this time when I replace it that I'll replace it with something nice. So that's why I went with this Scorpion. Oh shit. Now this is something to note that I just found out. Because I just put it on my battery minder charger that has an automatic desulfation pulse mode function. And it says do not use a charger that has that. It also gives some other warnings that the vehicle charging system and battery chargers should charge between 14 and 15 volts, which that's standard. Anything less than 14 will not charge and over 14 will cause battery damage. Now, like I said, when I took this directly out of the box and I hit the test mode, I had full battery. But just for good measure, I put it on the charger and just read this. So I took it off. So we'll just put it in the four wheeler and start it up and see how she does. But before we do that, I want to put this on a scale and because y'all are not going to believe how light this thing is. So these are just some more stats on the battery. If y'all want to pause that, you can look at it. But you know, it's third the weight of a lead acid battery. Excellent cycle life, over 2,000 cycles, which is under the JISD standard lead acid battery, only 150 to 300 cycles. And it also says there's no pollution, so the battery also does not contain any toxic metals such as lead, cadmium, and mercury. Now if you go through their little instruction booklet here with the very fine print, you can see that they recommend the battery tender charger, which is a lithium smart charger. You can see it says that it arrives approximately 30% charge and that it should be charged before you attempt to start your application. Now, I don't know about y'all, but low, medium, full, when I hold that down, that full is not 30%. So it looks like the battery's fully charged to me, and it arrived like this. All right, so I've got my scale here in pounds and ounces. We're gonna take our Napa battery. Ugh. Set that joker up there. 10 pounds, 9.6 ounces. Uh, now, we're going to take our Scorpion Stinger, and y'all ain't going to believe this. One pound, 12.6 ounces. This thing is crazy light. And so I'm sure y'all can tell this battery is a little bit smaller than the other battery that I had in here. And you can see the compartment that it's going into. You can see that it is going to be a little bit smaller with some room in there so what comes in the box they include these this plastic that kind of snaps together so you can snap these pieces kind of like this they go together so you can snap these pieces together to kind of fill in the gaps of course it's also going to come with screws for the battery terminals so i'm gonna go ahead and hook her up and uh See how she starts up. All right, so we got her mounted up and there's a few things I want to show y'all. So these pieces right here, you can either put them at the top 
or you could put them at the bottom to fill in the gap. Now, I could do that at the bottom, but as y'all can see, it's not exactly right. And I mean, putting them in here, they don't go in there tight. So, you know, bouncing around, I don't want these to fall out and then land down here on the engine or my exhaust. And then, you know, I've uh, got burnt plastic mess going on. But this battery, the battery is so light that it sits in this little cradle. So now, on every machine is gonna be different. On this ATV, you've got this holder that's held in by two Phillips heads and a 10 mil. So you can see I've got it tightened down. This battery is in here. It's not, it's not going anywhere. It's, it's in there and it's sturdy. I mean, it, it does have a little wiggle room, but it's in there and it's so light that it can sit in this cradle and not cause any issues. To add to that, your little wire clamps that hold your, uh, hold your positive and your negative down they kind of act as an anchor too. And with this thing being just over a pound, it sits in here with no problems. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it up and see how she fires off. So far, so good. All right, so far I'm really happy with the battery. You can see it turned this 650 over like no problem. I do still have a question about that desulfation mode on my battery monitor charger and why you're not supposed to use a charger that has that. I did reach out to their customer service. They were closed. It was after office hours, so I'm gonna call back tomorrow and I'm gonna let y'all know what they have to say. And I wasn't expecting this, but uh, the people at batterystuff.com actually gave me a call back and uh, answered my question, so I'll let y'all take a listen. Hi, this is Sarah with BatteryStuff.com. I was giving Kevin a call back about the Scorpion Stinger battery you purchased. Um, using it for about an hour probably wouldn't have hurt anything. Um, you shouldn't see any difference to performance or life for that, but it is recommended to use just a lithium-specific charger on those batteries. Um, we do have one for 6489. Part number is TM Thomas Mary 471. Uh, if you do have any further questions on, on how that works with uh, lithium, feel free to call me back. 800 362 5397. Thank you. All right, so I just got in touch with Battery Stuff, called him, talked to a super nice guy. He explained everything to me about that lithium battery. So he said that lithium battery, it is bad for that battery to use. A battery charger that has that desulfation mode and he said because of the high frequency pulses that it emits will ruin destroy those lithium cells now it's great for a lead acid battery like I've been using it on but it's horrible for that battery and it makes sense so he also said you know because if you're concerned about a, ch a good charger for it he said they don't require the same ma maintenance as lead acid does so that that battery in the four wheeler now uh, it should be fine without just you know just driving it um, and not really doing a lot of a lot of maintenance on it like you would with a lead acid and having to charge it all the time and stuff like that. So basically, he said it's just good to go the way it is. And I explained to him that you know normally with lead acid batteries, good maintenance on them, you know I can get three or four years out of them. He said on that battery, you can expect with normal use and normal run cycles, you can get six to seven years. That's crazy. I like to note also that anytime I'm starting that four wheeler, I've always had to, you know, even with a brand new battery in it, I'll have to choke it, hit the starter, and then give it a little bit of gas also. That is not the case with this. I can turn the choke and just hit the starter and lay it to it and it'll fire up. So I guess the takeaway here is if you have the extra money to spend, get a lithium battery. They're going to last longer and they put out a lot more power and they require little to no maintenance. And if you've been in the market for a lithium battery, I hope this video has helped shine some light on them and that you've learned something from it because I sure have. And I hope that you smash that subscribe button and smash that like button to help me out. Drop a comment if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. And if it's something I don't know, I'll try to find the answer for you. And as always, I'm Kevin Reese. See you on the next video.